we are getting ready for our annual fiesta here in the barangay that's always a lot of fun um this year we're going to be raising a pig last couple of years we raised 45 day chickens there they turned out to be really cheap and um, they're half the price of store-bought birds and almost twice the size this year we're raising a pig they think that will be fun i'm going in it with an open mind but kind of doubtful the theory is we will raise this pig putting all the money into the pig when we prep the pig we're going to keep half of it for us sell half of it the half we sell is supposed to pay us back for most of the cost not all of it but we'd still get half the meat I suspect this is going to be a money losing proposition but they want to try it so why not let's give it a shot and of course there's always ducks being raised I'm just going to Molo just going to go grocery shopping I was going to take a look at the ducks we got a duck pond they fenced it off that's a chicken it's not a duck um, it's kind of part of the, the beginning of the drainage ditch so it goes off this way and becomes our drainage ditch but right here it's just starting out so they fenced it off put a little covering here and um, where are our ducks running away from me they are going to end up dinner but they may as well be comfortable until then right it's a nice pond but ducks teach a valuable lesson you notice how they share their food chickens will fight and then nobody gets to eat because they fight ducks share chickens are skinny and pissed off ducks are fat and happy let's all be the ducks in the world right I was at the Bunko Boat races, which is a pretty cool thing, and was called home for a porcine emergency. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that word. Anyway, the theory was the butcher was going to come over at 1 o'clock to slaughter the pig. I was going to be there to claim the cuts of meat that I want. Well, I know 1 o'clock Filipino time, it means 2 or 3 o'clock, right? Wrong. 10.30 in the morning they call me and say, hey, he's already killed the pig, you better get over here quick. Now I showed Melanie on a chart exactly what I wanted and told her and she seemed to understand that I wanted the pork loin. It's basically the meat that's on a pork chop without the bone because I wanted a big roast. And she tells them to give me the back leg, which is not at all what I was talking about. So I go to talk to the butcher, and I picked up the rib cage, and I showed him exactly the meat I wanted. I said, see this whole big thing? Cut that off in one big piece. And he immediately hacked the entire rib cage into some of the ugliest pork chops I've ever seen. And I was like, uh, no, thank you. I picked up the other rib cage and said, I will take this. They're like, you want me to cut it? I said, no, 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 please. I will do it and I took it home to take care of it myself it is so hard to find a decent butcher here I rescued one well I guess it was gonna say rack of ribs but it's really the whole loin with bone it's still got the whole loin in it and the ribs and the chine they don't they wouldn't remove the chine the little feather bones but I will I've cut this piece off. I'm going to keep it separate as just a loin roast. I'm going to make a roast. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the bone. I will be taking the chine off, the little feathered bones here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to debone the whole thing. I'm probably going to French tip it so you have just the tips of the bone sticking out. It's just decorative. There's no reason to do it except it looks good. So I may just do a French tip on this and keep this as a big roast to make by itself this what I'm going to do is remove all this chine 
cut down the vertebrae, cut these feather bones off, leave the main ribs intact. I will cut this entire loin out. I will cut this entire loin out and I'm going to make butterfly cuts. They were supposed to leave a little bit of fat on it, but they took all the fat off. I like about a quarter inch of fat, but that was too complicated to try and tell them. So they cut all the fat. I was lucky to get this, so I can't really complain. But once I take this pork loin out of this, we're just going to be left with a rack of ribs. But let's get cutting. I did not show you the entire pig. I didn't know if y'all wanted to see it. It was in like eight different buckets and there was a big head and all the parts and very messy. Meat here does not come on a styrofoam tray from Safeway. We're very close to the meat source here. I'm keeping this roast simple. I was going to French tip it. I don't really care that much about French tips and you lose that meat. So I'm leaving it. But I took the chine off. You cut right down the vertebrae, right down the middle of the spine. And these are the little pieces, little feathered bones. And without a saw, that's really hard. But with my cleaver and knife and patience, I did it. Um, so it's just the rib bone left on and the whole loin. We're going to make a roast out of that. So I've got some peppers, different ground peppers, Italian seasoning, sage, basil. We're going to just rub that in. We're doing a dry rub and we're going to refrigerate it. Now the rest of this one, also I met when I did take this membrane off. If you ever do ribs, you've got to make sure and take this whole membrane off. It's really easy. I didn't show that because I forgot that it's simple. You just pop in underneath one rib. And this layer of snot comes up. And you peel this whole thing off. Once you dig under, it will peel off. It will probably not come off in one piece. It will come off in pieces. But you get that off because if you leave it, it's really tough. The rest of this, I will take the chine off of it, cut right down here, wish I had a saw, and then there's these little bitty bones here you take off. You leave the whole rib bone. I will be taking this roast off to butterfly it, this part of the loin, and then the ribs will have a layer of meat on them, and then I will make barbecue ribs. Okay, what I ended up getting was this loin roast that I showed you. It's got the whole loin section and the ribs. So with the bone, with the bone this is just a little over a kilo. So it's almost a kilo of meat and I could have used that to make more little individual pieces but I want to roast so that took a big chunk of it. I got two little sections of ribs, not much um, I left some meat on the rib. I did go ahead and crack the bone and peel the membrane off. So I will spice those up. I do not have a pressure cooker so I will steam those and then grill them outside. Leftovers, just going to throw it out for the dogs. It's just little chunks of bone little bit of meat on it. You could do stock or something. You could do stock or something with it, but there's not much there, so I'm not going to worry about it. And then because I have such a large loin over there, I did not have as much loin here. So I've got like seven pieces. They were going to be butterflied, but this pig was small, so I didn't really have anything to butterfly. This is basically what they call pork tapa here. So I just kind of cut. I weighed it out. I have seven portions not a lot could have got another probably seven portions out of that but I didn't because I want to roast so there we go it's all chopped up individually bag those and freeze them refrigerate that I will pour something to on it to marinate later I'm not sure what and I'll just do a rub on those a spicy rub 
and cook them up. The pig worked out about like I expected it to. Not a good money making proposition. Now if we were to have sold the entire pig, I think we would have made our money back on it. It was 50 kilos. So we kept 25 kilos, we sold 25 kilos. If we actually got the money for what we sold, it might have been okay. All I ever got was 2,000 pesos. So, wow. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to work out. So the 25 kilos we got ended up costing us 320 per kilo. At the grocery store, it's 230 a kilo. This was not a good money-making proposition. If they want to do chickens again, I'm all for it. But I told them I'm not doing the pig again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, either they didn't collect the money from whoever they sold it to, or they kept the money. I, like I said, I didn't expect this to be a money-making opportunity. They wanted to try it. Well, we didn't really lose much money and everybody had fun, so whatever. But I'm not doing it again. Uh, we spent, like I said, it was 10,000 pesos, just under 10,000 pesos overall on the pig. And feed. It's the feed that's killer. Open a feed store. There's the money. But when we sold, since I only got 2,000 pesos back, that means... The 25 kilos we kept cost me 8,000 pesos because I'm, Melanie was like, well, no, it's not that much. I said, until I get the rest of the money, that's what I spent for that 25 kilos of pork. And I'm not going to see the rest of the money. And I knew that going into this. I was not going into it blindly. I just didn't really care. Um, it worked out. We had a good fiesta, so whatever. The pork roast turned out really good. I did not French tip it because I didn't want to lose the meat, and I was kind of lazy. I did not cut the chine off the ribs for the barbecue ribs because, oh my God, without a saw, that's just way too hard. So uh, we steamed the ribs, then grilled them. They came out beautifully. Melanie likes my barbecue ribs, and I use just regular, was it craft barbecue sauce we get here locally. The pork roast turned out wonderful. I chopped up a bunch of different um, onions, carrots, potatoes, went in there with it, and it just turned out really, really good. So that was nice. Melanie does raise pigs out in the province. She has one of her aunts help her with it. And they make money on the pigs. They buy the piglet for like 3,500. They feed it for a couple months. It's like a thousand pesos a month. And then they sell it. They've been making about 3,000 pesos profit per pig, which is not bad for, you know, keeping it around for three months. Like I said, if we took this whole pig and sold it and actually got money, it would have been a money-making deal. Not a lot of money, but a little. But the way it works here with everybody's buying stuff on credit and all this fucking ridiculous. So I knew it wasn't going to work out. And it didn't. And I'm okay with that. Because everybody had fun. We still had a fiesta. We had lots of food and some rum. Let's go look at the fiesta now. Enjoy your day in paradise.